Hello, people of Twitch and YouTube, I suppose. Um, all my videos are uploaded to YouTube, uh, archived there as it well. Um, I've got, so if you miss part of this, you can watch the whole thing on YouTube. It's automatically recorded. So um, I'm also putting up all the videos very slowly up on Twitch too. So I don't know how long they'll stay up though. So, but, so I've got here some cards and envelopes. We're going to make some more cards for starters today. Um, so I pre-folded four cards. I was going to do a little bit of prep work before the show, but I didn't have time. So I got some new paper. Uh, it's full of Santa's candy canes, deer, stars, and trees. Um... I do have some more of that lovely snowflake paper. We're going to work with that in a little bit too. Um, let's see. See? Pretty paper. Now this particular paper I got from a local craft store uh, called Joann's. Um, it is a national chain. I'm not sure if you have one nearby you or not. They do have a website. You can look it up on Google. Um, and they have all sorts of neat stuff there. They recently had a very large paper sale, so I took advantage of that and bought what was left of this Santa paper, which was five sheets, I think. So we're going to make 20 cards out of this Santa paper today. Um, and that should be fun. So I think for starters, we're just going to start by folding all these cards. So. Like I said, I was going to do a little bit of prep work, but it didn't quite work out that way. So, just kind of hang 10 and work on these, I suppose. Get a good bunch of, well, I suppose we only need to do 20 of them, but. Because I only have enough paper for those 20 cards. It shouldn't take long. My little stack of squares. I totally expect these to make a big mess as I'm folding them, so I'm not doing it particularly tight, so just enough that they're actually folded. So one of the things I like about the Santa paper is that the Santas go in all different directions. So it doesn't really matter how the Santas are oriented on the cards, because there are going to be some upside down anyway, and some uprights, and some sideways maybe, I don't know. So it's cool. Makes my life a little bit easier when I have paper that I need to orient a certain way. Um, makes makes it a little trickier. It's not impossible, but it is. You just have to be aware of where you're sticking the cardstock and in which direction. So, yeah. So I hope you guys have had a good week. Mine has flown by. I had. D and D on Wednesday, and as always, it was a hoot. We're working through the Tomb of Annihilation, and so far we haven't had a TPK total party wipe. It's incredible. Um, I have some hopes that we won't actually do that, but this tomb is kind of known for killing party members and or entire parties, so. We will see how we do. I'll give you an update next Friday on how we're doing. So we do that every Wednesday. We're kind of fortunate. We have a very strong gaming community in my area. Um, what started out as like one lone role-playing group morphed into three or four. 
with more in the surrounding areas, of course. So it's just, it's kind of cool to watch it evolve. So gotta love D&D. See how many of these have we folded so far? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside for now. There should be 30 of these left. Um, I am going to be making all of these cards eventually using all this cardstock for Christmas cards. So I'm really super stoked about it. I've been compiling a list. Uh, I started already, so getting addresses from friends and family. Um, if you want to participate, you can go to my Patreon and be a patron for $5. For $5. It includes international shipping uh, and a cool card, maybe with a cool handwritten note inside. So. Probably with a cool handwritten note inside. Uh, I have a very persi persistent kitty that wants to get up on my lap. So, so we're going to take this paper. We're going to flip it upside down. Remove these envelopes out of the way. Got to get all the stuff. Butterfingers. Also a candy bar, no relation. So, there we go. So let's see here. We're going to start by adhering these blank cards to this paper using rubber cement. Uh, you can also use tape runners. I think I've covered that before in either video but it would have been episode three or four that I mentioned you can use double-sided tape. So I prefer rubber cement. It's just a personal preference thing. This stuff is pretty easy to use. It adheres to the paper super well. And it comes off the fingers really easy. I kind of feel like double-sided tape is not quite as forgiving. If you make a mistake or misplace it somewhere, like on your project, like if you put it in the wrong spot, I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel. Can hear beads rattling in the background. They're everywhere. I will um, try to post a picture of my bead wall up on Instagram for you folks. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Um, it's just like it sounds. It's a wall full of beads. I make a lot of jewelry. I, it's one thing I'm really passionate about. Um, and I make all sorts of different types of jewelry. I can weave. Um, I can use a loom. Although I haven't done that in a really long time. I imagine it's like riding a bike though. Um, I, I do uh, simple stringing. I do wire work. One thing I don't do yet is metal soldering or uh, I don't cut sheets of metal out. That is on my list of things to do. I'd also like to pick up lost wax casting again. I took a lost wax casting lost wax cast casting class in college many many years ago. Uh, it was super fun. I don't know 
how well you guys know me yet, but I make things that are pretty organic. So it was just a little bell-shaped pendant that had leaves and flowers all over it. Made using that really cool technique. A friend of mine does uh, lost wax casting too. Um, I'll have to see if I can't find her Instagram for you. Her work is incredible. I have some of her pieces. And I have a list of many more I want to get. So, so oh, well, I can tell you the name of the business, at least. It's Green Girl Studios. They have a website. I'm sure you'll be able to find it uh, using Google, as per usual. Um, I'm not sure what her website name is right off the top of my ha head. I don't know if it's a, a dot com or dot net or dot biz or, you know, all that good stuff, but I'm sure you guys will be able to find it. She makes really cool stuff, her and her husband. So, give her a little shout out here. You can tell her that Xena Jade sent you if you decide to order anything. I may let her know I mentioned her in this video. <laughs> It'd probably be the polite thing to do. So this one is finished for now. I, all I have to do is cut out these cards, but we're just going to do five sheets of these right in a row. So. Set those over to the side to dry. Grab another sheet. These sheets are really nice and thick too. They'd probably work as just cutting them out and folding them as cards on their own. The paper is so nice. Not quite as thick as cardstock, but not like super thin paper either. So it's nice. Oh, let's see. My favorite beads, and I'm talking about beads as I'm making cards. My favorite beads are probably freshwater pearls. I have a small obsession with pearls, particularly the freshwater variety because they come in so many different colors. They're dyed, most of them, but they're so pretty. And you can get them in different shapes, styles, and colors. So it's. They're super easy to use. I think most pearls are sold by the gram, so their holes are pretty tiny. Um, the stringing holes it can be kind of hard to get uh, thicker wire or thicker beading cord through them. You can use a bead reamer to uh, make that hole larger, but you have to be careful not to shatter the bead. I have a very persistent cat trying to get on my lap, so... Very persistent. I believe it's Piglet. It is. I called it. Yeah, he's very affectionate. He's a very sweet cat. Oh, rubber cement everywhere. Better clean that up real quick. So when this dries, it'll just, like, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's just going to come right off this wood surface. Super easy. Like, there's no residue there. It's all in the paper towel now. I should have been a little bit more careful, though, flipping my paper around. So let's talk cards some more. So, like, I know... Um, 
some people are super serious will make their own cut out their own cards and stuff I typically buy mine to save time because um, when you're making a hundred cards cutting and scoring a hundred of them is just one extra step that I just I just don't have time for so so I buy mine pre-cut pre-scored they come with envelopes and sets you can get them from tons of different places um, I know of three stores in the area who carry them here Joanne's Michael's and Hobby Lobby um, I'm sure you can get them from online retailers too uh, probably Amazon will carry them too and you might be able to find some sets on eBay maybe I've never looked on eBay for cards so but so this is just easier for me when you're using rubber cement you want to make sure to use it in a well well ventilated area um, because it does have a scent to it so I mean please keep it away from fire that's just a bad idea oh. almost done with this sheet now so I got um, I got another custom order for jewelry so I'm kind of hoping to get that done tonight as well but considering I have all this extra work to do on the cards I don't know if I'll have time to do that uh, as well so we'll just have to see here's to hoping though I like to get these done and out of the way so I can start I, dra I write everything by hand on the envelopes <laughs> I don't use a label maker or a printer um, to address all these cards I do it all by hand and I try to do it pretty so with arching letters and I don't do it in calligraphy yet but one of these uh, maybe next year my boyfriend will address them for me he's learning calligraphy so that was a glitter tube not I just knocked over it's shut. You don't need to worry. I did not just spill glitter everywhere. Although it wouldn't be surprising if I did. That sounds like something I'd do. And then the cats would be covered in glitter. Because I'd be willing to bet they're getting up on my tables. should leave a little spy cam to see what they're up to when I'm not around that would be hilarious so see other tips and tricks with cards um I'm trying to think of other you can use oh another thing you can use did here paper to the cards is glue are glue sticks so yeah just good old glue sticks um, one of the things on my wish list for card making is a die cut machine I've been watching some YouTube videos I'm like oh my gosh you can do so much cool stuff with die cut machines I particularly like the uh, layered shapes they can do and like and then make each uh, layer a different color that's so pretty so that's on my wish list along with a couple other interesting things 
I'd like a, well, it, it would be a die cut machine and embosser. So, to make raised shapes on cards or paper or whatever. And then another thing on my list to get is a uh, new embossing powder because I'm pretty sure my ancient embossing powder isn't embossing right. So I haven't bought new embossing powder in years. My bad. I have a really nice heat gun. And I haven't been able to use it because I have can't don't have the right embossing powder or newer embossing powder. But there's all sorts of neat stuff you can do on cards. So you can use die cuts. You can do like this paper and layer papers on each other. You can use glitter or pearlax powders, uh, inks, stamping. I mean, the list is endless, and any combination thereof. So. Any combination. You can use markers on die cut stuff, and or markers on stamps, and I showed you some really n nice uh, way to use brush pens on stamps last week, I think. So that's kind of exciting. To new em new embossing powder and a die cut and embossing machine are my list of things. list of crafty things and of course beads. Beads are always on the list. I have so many beads in my eBay cart right now. Most of them are freshwater pearls. Well I go through and pick and choose which beads I want. <laughs> which ones I really need to use for projects and there's we have one sheet left after we get this one done I apologize again that I didn't get this quite done before going live but it's a necessary step might as well show you guys how I do it as you can see, I'm lining up the edges. It keeps the cards nice and straight. Um, and it's super easy to cut. It's just like two cuts to get the cards loose this way. And then I'll keep the center part and maybe that's the other thing on my wish list is a laminating machine. Maybe I'll make bookmarks. That is going to happen. Bookmarks to go in cards. I have quite a bit of yarn already. I don't know if I have a lot of ribbon though. I'm going to string a little piece of yarn or ribbon through the top and make a cute little tassel for the bookmark. I think that would be cute. I think that would be super cute. So the neat thing about using rubber cement too is that if I get, I'm just going to put that in there. If I get rubber cement on the inside of this card, like if I got tape, if it overlapped at all, like you wouldn't be able to open this card, but with rubber cement, you're just able to pull it apart and it doesn't damage the card. 
So that's super nice. Last sheet of paper. Grab some more rubber cement. There we go. Getting it done. Just focusing on the task at hand. Get this done. Move on to something a little bit more entertaining. So yeah, you may hear my cats talk in the background. I I know I mentioned that before, but I was archiving, uh, or not archiving, but saving my broadcasts on Twitch. You know how you can save videos after you cast them? My internet isn't perfect here, so it was like saving a bunch of different videos from the same broadcast. So please bear with me while I get everything uploaded very slowly to Twitch and YouTube. Not quite right. There, yeah, that's better. Yeah, that'll just come right off. Well, we counted the cards right. That's good. Only have two left to do on these pieces of Santa paper. I guess another thing that would be kind of fun to have for streaming is like, I was thinking of like a GoPro camera and uh, hooking it to the front of my shirt or putting, a hat, putting it on a hat, I don't know, and being able to show you top down, like from my perspective, what I'm making. So I thought that might be kind of cool. I also found a very cute uh, little little camera that might work as a face cam. I don't know. But for just getting started, this works out pretty well. Put that in there. Last one. Hurrah. Closed rubber cement, good and tight. Back over my glitter again. There we go. So this 
This one can stay on the bottom because it's got to dry. This is the other one we did. Other ones we did today. And now we're just going to cut these apart real quick. As soon as I get rub off some of this rubber cement off my fingers. That's the other great thing about rubber cement. It doesn't, like, it just will ball right up and off your fingers or hands or pretty much any surface except for paper where you want it to stick. So here is my CraftSmart scissors that I labeled with a paper permanent marker. Put paper on it so it makes sure it stays nice and sharp for paper. I have a pair of fabric scissors too. Speaking of fabric, um, I almost decided to make cat toys tonight on Twitch because that's one cut. I guess it takes three to get all the cards loose, but so now we have a nice large piece of paper that will work great for bookmarks or little cards or gift tags or whatever your heart desires there. Gift tags might be cute too. There's those cards. This little scrap of paper I don't know what I'm going to do with yet, but I'll put it with the large sheets of paper. Just cut these apart. This is a fairly quick process, so... Try not to cut my seam too much. Oh right, cat toys. Um, so yeah, that would be super fun, I think. I also make plushies, uh, little art dolls. They're super cute. You can view some examples on my Patreon. I believe that post is public. It's toward the bot towards the bottom though, and a link is in my bio, uh, and it's Zena Jade. Like everything is, you can find me all over uh, social media as Zena Jade. I have an Instagram and a Twitter and a Tumblr. And I try to, if you're only on one and not the other, I try to cross post. So, like my videos get cross posted to all of those things after they're uploaded to YouTube. I know, I know a lot of people make cards and a lot of people do it differently than me. Um, and that's good. Uh, variety. For a horrible cliche, the spice of life. So, got some rubber cement there. I'm going to get rid of it. Like, uh, my best friend stamps out images, really cute stamps, and then she hand colors them. Like, it's amazing the amount of detail that goes into a 
into her colored cards. So it's pretty neat. I'll have to see if I can't find one of her color cards for you guys. I, I have I have them everywhere. <laughs> she sent me we we send each other cards a lot, so I don't always make cards. Like you know, I have lots of crafty pursuits. Like I said, I make uh, the art dolls, the plushies, and cat toys, and cards, and jewelry. Um, I do some digital art. Like I made all the little graphics for my profile. Um, And those are just simple little things. Every once in a while, and I do mean every once in a while, I do like simple animations. So. In Photoshop is my preferred. I like Adobe products. So. And you can make simple animations in Photoshop, so just cute little GIFs. Super easy. There, put these scraps of paper with the other scraps of paper. Keep them in one spot. there. So I didn't have like a completely solid design idea for these. I'm just going to open these up now because I put, the, put them in the stack in all different directions. Um, so no real clear design idea for these cards. I thought I would just fly by the seat of my pants making these because I really like the paper. It's super fun. Um, Gotta love candy canes and Santa Clauses. So, let's see if I can get this card open. There we go. That's not too bad. See, but like the rubber cement caught a little on these edges, the paper didn't tear at all. So, big plus of rubber cement in my book. doesn't really even matter if they stick to each other. It's not going to tear the paper. But it adheres it real well. One of the other things I really like about this Santa paper is that the stars are all glittery. I don't know how well you can see that on, on the camera, but let's see if I can. I don't know if you can see that or not. My, my uh, preview image of my video is very small. So, there. So, I don't know how well you guys can see that sparkle on the cards, but it's very pretty. So, hopefully, I'll be offering like cat toy tiers on Patreon too. Um, I use organic catnip, which it's cool, I guess. Um, organic catnip. And when I start making cat toys, I usually make oodles of them. Because everybody I know wants the cat toys. They're super popular. Cats love them. They've been cat tested and approved. Um, as with all cat toys, though, I would request that you keep an eye on your kitty so the threads don't get caught in kitty's teeth. So, but that's true of all cat toys. Gotta keep an eye on those kitties. So I did pick out a couple different stamps. I picked out Making Spirits Merry and Bright. Yeah, you can see that. That's pretty good. 
And then the, since it's a Santa, I thought I might put the ho 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 on the envelope. It's awfully cute. Um, I'll show you real quick. So these are all the envelopes I've stamped so far. And they've all got this lovely little snowflake on them. And that's for the snowflake cards. So I don't know if you guys realized exactly how many of these we've made so far. This many. That is that is 47 cards we've made. I finished up, I think I finished up a handful of them off camera. But I did decide to nix the glitter on these. So I just thought the the glitter wasn't staying on there real well without a fixative. So but that lovely plum color goes super well with the snowflakes. Get glitter everywhere. So back to these guys. So I had to decide what to put on the fronts of these, if anything. I think it might be kind of cute it to do like one of these, like a ho ho ho. But, and then just, oop, sorry, butterfingers again. Maybe one of those like right there. We could put it in the center too. That might look that might look kind of nice. I kind of like things off center though. In cards, like jewelry, has to be symmetrical cards, any way we please. So, but we could put cut out a little piece of paper to fit this. Okay, well maybe we'll work on that off camera. I'll have to decide. But we can work on this making spirits merry and bright sentiment right now. I think I think we may do the tree like we did on the inside of these of these cards. We'll do the tree the same. Um, because the Santa card The Santa card has pink in it. The pink in these berries and and some of the ornament and I think I, I'll carry that over to this tree on the inside too. I think that'll look pretty sweet. All right, one card at a time. So as before, when we when we do these, got oodles of brush pens, and I'm using these three colors. It's like a nice dusty rose pink, pine green, and just cardboard box brown. I don't know. It's a brown. <laughs> so, but we'll start with the green. That way if the green seeps over into any of these other color like areas where we want other colors, that color will just wipe away the green. So make sure to get the corners real well. Usually I mess up this first impression before I get the hang of it again. So there's the tree all done up. Next we'll do the heart. And we'll do the trunk of the tree. And you may have noticed I breathe on the stamp after I use the brush pens on it. That's to re-wet the ink because it took me a while to color it. I mean, not too long, but it took me a while 
that it had dried a little. So I may not have gotten the full impression if I had used the moisture for my breath to make it so it was more inky. So, but that turned out pretty good. No mistakes that time. That is pretty swanky. So, let's see here. I don't actually think I have a star stamp. That's kind of a shame. I have quite a few stamps, but not tons, like some people I know. I may have a star stamp. It just may be hiding. I don't know. Okay. Do this. I'll probably only do like five cards like this, and then we'll move on to the next part because we just glued all 20. Take forever to do this for 20 cards, I think. I do want to make some jewelry tonight. So, yeah, I also hoard beads and stamps and craft supplies. I have a problem with like pens and markers and pencils and I have some Staedlers at home. I bought, I originally bought a smaller pack of like, no it's not 12, it's like, I'll have to get it out and show you. But it's a smaller pack than like their 36 color pack. <sighs> Which of course I had to buy. Because I like them so much. And now I have a little a little set that I carry around in my purse. Yeah, that's pretty good. Just dropping everything today. Please forgive me. So after I get all these videos uploaded to Twitch and YouTube, we're going to have pizza. Yum yum. Gotta love pizza. So I'm just learning all the cool things you can do on Twitch. Like, you can make your little bot say neat things about your stream. I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> I think that'll be pretty neat to get that all sorted. I just haven't had time to dedicate to get all that figured out yet, which is too bad because I think it'll be fun. We, another thing we need to do regarding my stream is get my microphone set up. The, the microphone that's currently in use is my webcam microphone. And while it's not bad, I could probably get some better sound with an actual microphone. So, so that would be cool. And I have one of those already, so. That's exciting. Not on the wish list no more. So I've been watching other creative Twitchers too, and they are so much fun to watch. So you may see me pop in and out of different people's streams. Not while I'm making stuff, of course, but just in general. I hope you say hi if you see me. Um, I think that would be pretty neat. 
And if you saw me and said hi. So we can blame my mom for getting me into card making. Uh, and blame it all the right ways. She thought it would be a good hobby for me back when I was not doing the greatest. So, and it, I had a lot of fun with it. So, a lot of fun with it. I have, I probably have pictures of old cards around here somewhere. I have oodles of pictures of old arts and like digital arts and cards and all that sort of stuff, but it's not like they're on CDs. <laughs> and like modern computers don't come with CD drives anymore. So I do have like a, like a external CD drive, which is pretty cool. That means I can at least access all these old files. And, uh, well, that's five. I think we're going to do ten of these. Just keep going a little bit longer. And then, uh, yeah, so all those, those cool pieces of art and pictures and I worked as a product photographer for a while. Um, that was super fun. I did photography for one or two weddings. Also fun. Um, I've done jewelry for several weddings. Maybe the same ones. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of wedding jewelry. I suppose I could. I make these really cool, um, really cool pendants out of wire and briolettes, which are teardrop shaped beads, and then like rondelles, which are like little wheel shaped beads, and uh, wire it all together on a frame, which I hand, hand form, and then, um, And those are really sweet, simple, and classy. You can see a bunch of them on my website. Um, I think they're under the category of teardrop necklaces or teardrop pendants on my website. And it's zenithjcreations.com. So, or zenithj.com. They'll both work. Yep, they'll both work. But I just think they're the prettiest. It's like my newest obsession with jewelry making are making those teardrop pendants. My boyfriend bought me a huge spool of wire so I can continue making them because I was buying little spools at a time before I realized how much I like to make them. And he's like, no, you're buying too much wire. Here's the big spool all at once. It was it was awesome. So I think I think I have like thirty or forty of those pendants on my website and like a bunch made for shows too. Like a bunch. Oh look, they're so pretty. And they come on chains. In all different colors. Uh, and gemstones. 
that's the thing I like the most about them is that they're, well, one of the many things I like about them is that they're made from like all real gemstones. I have some genuine emerald briolettes and they are gorgeous. I've got uh, Labradorite briolettes that have like the most fire that I've ever seen in a briolette. Um, I've got amethyst briolettes and garnet briolettes and tiger eye briolettes. Like the combinations are endless. And when you add in like a humongous uh, source of accent beads, which I mean, that are already in my collection, you can just come up with all, all sorts of neat combinations. So I will take a picture for Instagram of my beads. <sighs> my little collection. And that, and that is Zenith Jade as well. Instagram.com slash Zenith Jade. You can view pictures of the kitties on there. They're cute and fuzzy. Very cute and fuzzy. I'm totally biased. It's kind of funny when I find out another streamer has cats, I'm like, you have cats. What are they like? Do they like to talk during your streams too? <laughs> so I uh I recently offered to help someone figure out how to turn uh, perler bead stuff into keychains. So I hope she actually gets in touch with me to ask how to do that because I have ideas. I have options. <laughs> so she's rad. Highly recommend. I can hear my cats purring. I know you guys probably can't, but they sound very happy. So cute. All the cute. Just checking on the chat stream to see if anybody's talking to me or not. I don't want to miss saying hello given the opportunity. If you say hello first. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to do on Twitch is show how to do uh, like an ombre effect with acrylic paints wet on woodcuts because I've been having like the most fun doing that too. So like the most fun.
Make sure you get all the corners. Get a little heart at the top of the tree. A small stack of these left to do. Might as well get them done. Coloring on stamps. The the funny thing is that I don't see a lot of people using this technique in videos. And I just think it's the neatest. So and you can use like fine point like these memento pads might also work because they have a little tip on there, a point. So might also work for getting detail on stamps. finished pile. I'll have to cut strips of paper for this one though because I didn't pre-cut those. I wasn't sure what stamp I was going to use with these and I don't want to stamp directly onto this paper because it's so busy. So I mean I probably could if it was black ink but and then maybe emboss it but I need more embossing powder to do that and I think it would look better raised up anyway. So. Make sure this is thoroughly saturated. So I should note that these are just generic brush pens and they work great. Um, I know I've also mentioned this before but Tombows may also work on uh, stamps. You can see this, this particular stamp has been well loved. It's got ink all around the edges. See, like over here. <laughs> See, I think we have four of these left to do. Um, 
Just covering this whole tree with green. I think it would also look pretty cute as like a rainbow tree, but it doesn't quite match these cards. I might give it a whirl just for fun. Because I think that might look cool. shoot. Two of the cards stuck together so I think this is the number three then there will be two and one left to do. There we go. I'm getting pretty good impressions of, of this uh, stamp today. I'm rather happy with that. I don't think I've messed it up once. Now watch all. Mess one up, but usually it's one of these little corners right here. One of these two corners that I don't Don't quite get down an impression from, but maybe today I'll get them all right. So another thing I collect, and don't laugh at me, well you can laugh at me, it's funny. Another thing I've been collecting are postage stamps. Now I don't have like an actual collection of them, I just think like the post office has been coming out with so many cool stamps. And I just keep buying stamps. So I have like 132 postage stamps right now. I'm like, well, that's awesome. I have enough to mail holiday cards. Then. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. Um, I have Elvis stamps and scratch and stiffs, scratch and sniff stamps. Postage post office came out with those, and then I have. Um, the pet stamps, the, those came out a while ago. Wonder Woman stamps. Um, oh gosh, so many stamps. Some Harry Potter stamps. There's what's not to love about Harry Potter, I guess. And The only thing I don't have or don't have like already are international stamps. So I'll have to go to the post office and pick some of those up. Because I have several friends who live in other countries. Alright, so this is good. Use my handy dandy paper towel here that's all folded up. See, all folded up. And then we're just going to clean the stamp with some stays on. Stop. Yeah. It's all purpose stamp cleaner. So. Just get this. Good and clean. Cleaning off the felt a little bit without wasting too much of the stamp cleaner. Yep, 
That should be clean. It just needs to dry now. So we got all 20 of these stamped now. So now we have a choice. Um, oh, not yet. No choice yet. These are brush pens. They are a little furry. Um, there may be two two sets in here, maybe three. <laughs> I have a lot of brush pens, so um, I kept buying sets because I kept misplacing them until I put them in this cup. So it's a little dusty. Um, so I think I'm going to try to do the rainbow tree real quick because I think that will be rad. So we'll just take a clean piece of white cardstock. Well, maybe we'll do this on the inside. I'll figure out what, what color to put on the outside. Maybe glitter paper. That would be amazing. Oh, let's see. So we're looking for red, red, orange, yellow. We use this green, this blue, this purple, and maybe we'll use a pink. That pink. Okay. Let's see if we can make this work. These colors should all blend together pretty nice. Do the top as a red. if we have room for pink. Green. Be able to fit purple and pink down here. Purple. A little bit of blending with this green. The very bottom pink. Should we see how this turns out? I think it's going to look pretty cool. Put on the stamp. Make sure to get a really good impression. Oh, that turned out even better than I anticipated. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is just really cool. Why didn't I do all of them this way? <laughs> Would have taken forever. But yeah, it looks really cool. So that'll be a special one. Maybe once I get Twitch figured out a little bit better, I'll probably give this one away in a giveaway. So as soon as I figure out how to do giveaways, we'll give this one away. So I will put... Probably glitter paper on the front of this with a, with maybe a, a snowflake or a heart or sentiments or something like that. And then we will figure out what sentiment to put in here together, I think. So, oh, that's Angel. But. So, yeah, that turned out really cool. Sweet. Set that aside. So now we have to wash this one off. There's 
that. There. Now it's all clean. Except for the wood. The wood will always be stained now. So we got all of these with the trees on them now. Um, I think we're going to do Making Spirits Merry and Bright in here. I'm just trying to decide what color. I think um, red may look good. This lovely blue color may look good. Green would probably look pretty good. Maybe we'll go with green. I know we went with green in the snowflake ones to match the tree, and it looks pretty slick. So, we'll use green again. Here we go. Grab that. I'm just going to take a sip. I'm drinking root beer tonight. I know it's so exciting. When I get exciting, I drink coffee. <laughs> so, exciting as coffee. And maybe Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I actually went to Walmart tonight and they were out of Dr. Pepper. Angel's being very vocal. So you just have to lightly stamp this on here. It doesn't take a real hard push. You'll over ink your stamp. Which is probably why this got stained. I don't know if I did that or when I lent out my stamps if somebody else did that. but. Oh yeah, that looks pretty nice. I might move it over a little, but yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Okay, running out of places to put stuff. Is this one card? Yeah, it's one card. Man, I just can't get over at how cool that rainbow tree turned out. That makes my day, I think. Yep, that's a little bit better. I moved it over a twitch. Just a little bit. This is two cards. Really, Angel. Angel is a rescue. I went to New York to get her. Um, she was like, looked exactly like my cat, Honey. And when I saw her on Facebook, on a, on a page that advertised kitties, that were in shelters, specifically kitties that were going to be put down very soon. Um, I knew I had to have her. She, uh, or she told me she had to have me. <laughs> Who knows? She, uh, she started out very, very people shy because she was on the streets of Brooklyn and she's missing part of her tail. I don't know if she's part manx or if her tail actually got injured but the vet that looked at her before I came and got her said that it didn't cause her any pain so that's good so she could be part manx she could have a stubby tail who knows she's she's actually in my twitch profile she's kind of a funny cat she likes to wear costumes I have pictures of her I got let's see I think I only have 
I think I have three costumes for her. I have a little dress, and she got a kick out of wearing that. And then she likes wearing the shark costume because I think she thinks she looks ferocious. And then she has a unicorn costume. So, all totally adorbs. It's, it's pretty funny. But yeah, she's my profile picture for Twitch. Kitty in a shark, shark costume. But yeah, she looked exactly like my other cat, Honey. Um, he passed away this year. He was 19. He, uh, I got him when he was like six weeks old. So, yeah, I've had, I had him for a long time. He went everywhere with me. Like, several moves across states and, you know. So, he was a sweet boy. So, anyway, it's kind of funny because Honey was King Cat among among my kitties and now Angel is Queen Cat among the kitties. So, I guess orange cats rule. Other cats drool. I'm just kidding. All cats rule. Again, a little bias there. I really love animals. Animals are pretty awesome. They they make excellent companions. Drop my ink pad on my desk. <laughs> Yeah, doing these single colored stamps goes quite a bit faster than brush pinning colors on, but which is why we're making such good progress. Yep, we're going to do all 20 of these. And then I may make jewelry if I have enough time. I have to make like a metric ton of Jingle Bell bracelets. I've been making those on Twitch. Um, I think I made some in episode two and I made some in episode four. I don't remember about episode three, but They're specifically for kids. I can make some adult size too, and I probably will. They're really cute. Um, and they jingle. <laughs> jingle by bracelets, you know, got a jingle. So, and I've been using uh, black acrylic beads and clear AB acrylic beads with spacers in them. Because otherwise, it would be wildly, a wild amount of. Jingle bells per bracelet. Just wild. Super jingle. Oh, well, LAC came out. I guess she wanted to say hi too. Where'd she go? <laughs> Under my feet one minute and gone the next. Yeah, so you can view pictures of the kitties on Instagram. If they ever decide to come up here while I'm working, you'll get to see their backs. Unless they look up at the camera. 
which they may. I don't know. Cats are funny. Getting these done. Santa Claus cards. I was thinking about that ho 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 stamp again. I'm almost wondering if I don't want to layer two different colors of paper together. Like white on top and glitter on the back. I think that would look really pretty. Maybe with red glitter paper or green or blue. I might do all three and make these super individualized cards. I got some really cool glitter paper at Joann's when it was on super sale. So that's really exciting. I think. I gotta, I'll show you the stack of paper. That's a kitty talking. I think that's Meow Wow. There. So that's these. Ta-da! Now they just need some accents. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do snowflakes in here. I may have to track down a heart stamp. I may have a peppermint heart stamp. Um, let's take a look here. Oops. Sorry. So I have this array of sentiment stamps. Came in a pack of five. I got these at Michael's last year, I think, or the year before. And then these are Christmas and winter stamps. So I tried to keep them in a little bag. And this one's pretty cute. It's a little peppermint, a little peppermint heart. I don't know if that would look good with that. I'm kind of leaning towards snowflakes again. There. All right. Yep, kind of leaning towards the snowflakes again. Because I have all these sizes to choose from. So, and I think because this paper is a nice blue color, I can use blue snowflakes in here. And that'll make them a little different from the snowflake cards. Even though they're similar, they won't be exactly the same. So, we'll just set those aside for now. And I think we're going to have a small intermission while I clean this area off and maybe make some jewelry. So, but it, yeah, we'll make some jewelry. So, all right, I'll be right back.
All right, back and ready to make some jewelry. So I think I was saying I have a custom order. Um, I have some really pretty glass rondel beads. They're like little wheels. These are black onyx. They're faceted black onyx. They're very pretty. Um, I don't know if this camera adequately catches their sparkle. but And then I have some really nice green adventuring round beads. So she wanted something that specifically will go with the sweater she owns. So grab a hemostat in here. These beads are rather large so the inner diameter will be small if I don't make the bracelet a little larger. Get those out of there. So many of you may know I reuse these little plastic baggies because they're super handy and recycling is good. Some. So almost all beads are strung on temporary beading cord, temporary cord. Please don't just put a clasp on this or tie it around somebody because it'll fall apart. So then that would be sad. There was something else I wanted to, to tell you guys today, and that's a, a that specifically about beaded jewelry. I'm not sure if it really applies to applies to chains or not, but um, with beaded jewelry, if you wear it a lot, like every day in the shower, um, you know all those things, like <laughs> your your the stringy material that it, that's holding it together will need to be replaced periodically if you wear something like that all the time. Um, so if you wear it all the time, I'd say replace it every six months. Get somebody to restring it for you every six months. Otherwise, you will be very, very sad when it comes apart. <laughs> like, I mean, and it may hold, but just to be on the safe side, like, you really want to restring that sucker, so... That's probably too big. But, uh, yeah, so you really want to restrain beaded jewelry periodically. Um, for jewelry that's only worn occasionally, um, you can restring it, like, once every two years. If you wear it in the shower, you're going to want to restrain it more often than that. If you put um, perfume on after you put on your jewelry, you're going to want to string it sooner than that. Um, perfume is is awesome, but it can strip color out of beads and it can strip the knacker off of pearls. So typically you'd like to put your perfume on before you put your jewelry and let your perfume dry a little before putting on your jewelry because it can damage real gemstones. And the same goes with showers and soap and stuff. So you just want to be a little careful with it. I felt really sad. There was a woman that I'd made a bracelet for. Um, and her bracelet broke, but she had been wearing it all the time. And it had been like six months since she'd bought it. I'm like, yeah, that's about the right timeline for... Not the right timeline to get something restrung. So there's like really nothing for it. You just need to make sure to get it done. So 
I am going to use my handy dandy bracelet sizer because the woman I'm making this for has really tiny wrists and this may be a little bit too large. So that's one of the reasons I have it. Yeah, it's going to be too big, I bet. Grab this. This is an Easy Bracelet Mini. It's a bracelet sizer. It's got measurements in inches and centimeters. So it makes measuring bracelets super easy. Well, that's not as big as I thought it was. See how six and three fourths. Hmm. one thing. See how much shorter removing these two beads will make it. That's way too short. Okay. So I think we'll put this back on there. This back on there. That out of the way. Now I'm going to tie a knot. I believe this is called a surgeon's knot. My fingers are probably in the way, so I don't know how well you're able to see what I'm doing, but I'm wrapping it around this cord twice one on top, one on bottom. And then I'm pulling it tight. Just checking the knot there to make sure it won't come loose. So that's really nice. Oops. Very pretty bracelet. Blacks and greens. So now I'm going to glue that knot. I have GS Hypo Cement in here somewhere. I am a little obsessed with Hello Kitty, so this, my cup that's holding my scissors and my pens is a Hello Kitty cup. I got it at Walmart for like 98 cents. And then the mug holding my brush pens is also a Hello Kitty mug or cup or whatever. And it's really, the reason it's holding my brush pens is because it has a crack in, in the bottom. It doesn't quite hold liquids. It's very sad, but that's okay. Repurpose it for something else that doesn't require it to hold liquid, and it works just fine. Okay. There. Now we have to. Now this glue requires 24 hours to set completely. It'll probably be dry to the touch in two. So, so there's that. I think I might make a quick pair of matching earrings. Um, here are earring hooks. I get these earring hooks from Fire Mountain Gems. They're great. Um, these are silver plated, sterling silver plated over surgical steel. Yeah. So they're great for people with sensitive ears. Let's see here. I'm looking for my head pins. 
I know they're around here somewhere. I have beads everywhere. I've been working on Christmas projects and Christmas earrings and Christmas bracelets and here we go. These are three inch nickel free head pins. And these I bought at Michael's. I'm probably gonna if I can string oh wrong side. I'm gonna make sure that doesn't go through this hole. See? Staying on there, that's good. Sometimes these head pins, the heads of the pins are awfully tiny and they don't quite aren't quite big enough to keep the bead from falling off. So I always double check make sure it's not gonna zoom right off of there. I think I think we might just make these pure black earrings. I think that'll look really really sweet and then she can wear them with stuff she doesn't wear the screen with. Multi-purpose. So grab my tools. These are round nose pliers. I'm just gonna wrap this wire around. Do the same thing on this one. Some people will um mark their players with permanent marker so they make consistent loops. I've been doing this for so long that I can eyeball it and get it pretty accurate most of the time. So I've been making jewelry for about 20 years next year. So I've been making jewelry a really long time. since 1999. Make sure that wire isn't sticking out. Take my bent nose pliers and just make sure there are no wires sticking out. Oops. There. Oops. Hi, kitty. Hi. Hi. She was trying to crawl up my chair. And subsequently my leg too. So <laughs> she's very she's a very talky cat. That was Allie C. Just open and close those. String these on. I'm going to put these back up here. Maybe rattle the camera a little. And I'm going to show you guys these earrings. Aren't those glorious? I think they're really pretty. Yeah. So they go with the bracelet. Most excellent. So. Alright. Well, I think I'm going to call it for tonight. Um, this is a fairly long time for me. It's almost, I've almost been on for a full two hours. So that's pretty good. Um, so next time I stream, it's going to be Monday from five to seven. Uh, you can view me on Patreon if you want a card. Um, you can get one there. 
If you want jewelry, you can custom order jewelry. Uh, my email is in my contact information. It's also zenithjcreates at gmail.com. Um, you can request custom jewelry on, on the contact form on my website, with the, which is zenithjcreations.com. Um, or custom cards. custom, Basically anything I make, I can do custom. So that's one of my favorite things to do. So, um, yep, and any questions, you can send them to the email. Yeah, so it should be good. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday.